What workflows are affected most by adding 3D printing to your dental office? Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Griffin, founder of the 3D Printing Association for Dentists, and this is the video series that helps you get 3D printing implemented into your practice. If you guys would go ahead and subscribe to this channel and give us a thumbs up, We'd be more than happy to keep sending these videos out and it helps everybody find us easier. We'd really appreciate it. So what workflows are most affected by 3D printing when you add it to your dental practice? Um, well, of course, the, the most common one you're thinking of, okay, it affects all my clinical workflows because now, instead of having to send out to external labs all of our um, you know, dentures, night guards, uh, surgical guides, things like that, they're all affected some more than others. Uh, I think the most affected workflow probably has to be for clear liners in our practice. So, you know, before the workflow would be something like, you know, the patient comes in, they agree to it, uh, you know, we have a long conversation about how much it costs because we're having to send so much money to the, to the companies that do the clear liners for us. And then, you know, once they agree, then we scan them, send it to the lab, uh, you know, it takes uh, uh, from two weeks to 30 days to get the, the thing back, usually some sort of a clean check or something. And so we bring the patient in, we would let them say, yes, I like it, no, I don't. Then we would hit submit, and then we would eventually get the aligners. And, you know, it's just a long drawn out process. Uh, and it's different for every company, don't get me wrong. Some are better than others. But the workflow now for us with clear liners is pretty much patient says yes, we scan them, we send the, the files uh, to our internal 3D printing expert, they take over, they, they you know, modify everything, build out the models that need to be done, then we send it uh, back to another person to do the uh, thermal forming trays over the models that we've built and then we trim them up and we're usually ready to go within just a couple of days. We can even do same day starts now. Uh, so that workflow has been affected tremendously. Every other clinical workflow that we that 3D printing touches has also been affected. I mean immediate dentures. We could do same day if we want to do those. Uh, that was never the case before. Uh, night guards. So easy. I mean it's one of the easiest things you could possibly do. Um, just a lot of stuff. And hey, permanent crowns bursting onto the scene. That is changing a ton of workflow for permanent crowns, right? So all these clinical workflows, they're just changing left and right. And so you might, if, you're getting, if you're getting ready to get into 3D printing, one of the things you may not, you know, that's scaring you from getting into 3D printing is, gosh, I just don't want to get that staff pushback when I add all this cool stuff to my practice that I didn't have before. You know, in previous videos we've talked about, hey, space requirements and stuff like that. It's really not what you think, so that's not that big a deal. Uh, I think the biggest hurdle to any dentist successfully implementing 3D printing has got to be staff buy-in. Because look, you're dealing with a complicated change in your practice. And it doesn't, take, it doesn't have to be a complicated change to have staff resistance, right? It could be something very minor. And, and you sometimes just really anger your staff members, right? But this is, this is definitely something that you've got to think about when you get ready to go. But you know, look, I, this video is being shot in 2023. This stuff is bursting onto the scene. So there will come a day when you're not going to have the option. You have to implement this into your practice. And, and when you do, you should know what workflows are affected. So clinical, absolutely. That's number one. Let's talk about some other workflows that you may not have thought about, okay? Well, number two, number two, how about case presentations? Well, you're saying, Chris, what in the world could 3D printing have to do with changing the workflow and the way case presentations are done? Well, you know, if you're sending all your lab work out to an external lab, you're sending all your crowns, you're sending all your dentures, you're sending all your clear aligners, uh, if you want to do an implant and you want to use a surgical guide, if you're having to send that out to a lab, all these things take time. And, and it's not as urgent that you go ahead and you, you know, get everything rolling the day that you diagnose it. You can diagnose it, you can even let them think about it a little while and then go ahead and move forward whenever uh, they're scheduling out. And you know, one thing that 
you know, it's, if you're used to it, that's fine. But one thing that I've always known to be the case in dentistry is that the longer someone goes from the moment of diagnosis to when they accept the case uh, to when they actually move forward with the treatment, until that treatment is actually started, there's a lot of stuff that can happen. In some of my lectures, I talk about this thing, the butterfly effect, you know? And the, so the butterfly effect was something that, you know, we heard growing up, it was like the theory that a butterfly would flap its wings in the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Africa. And, you know, a month later, you'd have a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, just from the change in wind current, you know, this one little butterfly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy, it's hyperbole, but, if you think about it, think about a patient. You know, they're in need, they're in your dental office. First off, no one just goes to a dental office for the heck of it. Now they may go for a regular checkup and you may diagnose something and you know, they're not necessarily in pain, but they're coming to the dentist for a reason. It's tough enough to get them to the dentist. Once they're at the dentist, that's the best time to ever get them to do some kind of other treatment at the dentist. And hey, if you can do it today, if you can at least start it today, my goodness, I'm already here. I don't want to, I really don't want to come back about any more times than I have to. If I'm the patient, I'm thinking this. I mean, it's just the best time to move forward and gain acceptance and go ahead and start treatment. Get, get the ball rolling, right? And so 3D printing changes that. So before, if maybe you were able to do more of a laid back deal and you get people back in the office and let's go through this big treatment plan and let's, you know, let's have a consultation and let's show some, some pictures and videos. And there, there are consultants that just have whole courses on this. How amazing it is to have a consultation room and bring people back another day. Um, and that's fine. I've not ever really done it that way, even before I got into 3D printing. Um, but that's fine if you do it that way. But what you'll find is now that you have the ability to do all this stuff same day, um, you're going to need to get this you're going to get, need to get your case presentation, your diagnosis and your case presentations down a lot faster. Because now, if you don't do that, since you have the ability to do something now you didn't have the ability to do before, you're really wasting an opportunity to, to get something you probably w wouldn't get if time passed, right? It's, uh, it's called opportunity cost. So you have the opportunity to do something today. If today passes, it may not come again. The opportunity may leave forever. So that's something you're going to have to work. The workflow for case presentation, uh, diagnosis, case presentation, case acceptance, that's going to change. And, uh, and so that's something you're going to have to think about because now not only is 3D printing touching the clinical side of your practice, it's also touching the clerical or the front office side of your practice. Okay. And number three is something I know you probably haven't thought about associated with 3D printing, right? Um, before we get to that real quick, of course, the association, we're the ones putting on these videos, the 3D Printing Association for Dentists. Uh, the website is 3dpa.org, and if you go there, we've got you some really awesome free resources. So I'm a big checklist guy, and so I've got checklists built out for tons of stuff in my office. One thing at the website we're giving you guys for free is we've got checklists for the top three procedures that we do every day in our practice that are associated with 3D printing. So I believe those checklists are for clear liners, um, implant surgical guides, and immediate dentures. And so you can go there, you can grab my free checklists. Uh, they're proven, we've been using them a long time. And also with those checklists, you get a walkthrough video of each checklist where I actually describe exactly what's going on on the checklist all the way down the line. Uh, so that's what we're doing there. And uh, go grab your checklist for free <coughs> and then, you know, and then keep going back to the page of the association. We're adding free stuff all the time. So the third thing you may not have thought about that's a workflow that's going to change, how about financials? So if we're changing, if we're changing the workflow in case uh, in diagnosis, case presentation, case acceptance, guess what has to be figured out pretty quick if you want to do same day treatment that you now have the ability to do, it's financials. And so we've got a system in my practice we call fast financial arrangements. It pretty much starts the moment the patient walks in the door or, or you, it actually starts as soon as you gain their information, whether or not they have insurance. If they do have insurance, you need to get that verified and have an idea of what they might cover. So that might start before the appointment. If not, it starts as the second the patient walks in. And, uh, and so all that has to be spinning in the background so that when you go in and you diagnose and you 
allow your case presentation person to figure out the money, they have an accurate idea of exactly how much it's going to cost the patient or get pretty close, you know. I mean, you know, who knows? With insurance, we never know. But we would like to know as closely as possible to give the patient confidence, okay, if I do this today, I'm only going to owe X or very close to X amount, okay? So that's a, that's, that's a workflow you probably haven't thought about, but you're going to have to get those down fast. Like, if you're used to taking a while, because it takes a while to do things, if you're sending stuff out externally, you're going to have to condense all that effort down that you do and, and make it, you know, make it happen in a much shorter time frame. Otherwise, you're losing that opportunity cost. And heck, forget about that. A lot of times, if that happens, the patient may lose the opportunity to do a really great procedure that would really help them at a lower cost than they normally would. And so you're also losing the ability to help people that might need a little extra help financially. So those are, those are three, three workflows that are gonna be touched, uh, three big areas actually, three areas of workflows that will be touched in everybody's practice as we move forward into this new world of 3D printing. Okay, all right everybody. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Keep coming back and we'll see you next time.